I want to talk about this image and why it matters and what it teaches us about human behavior. I think that understanding the psychology behind why this image works can help us become better leaders, better spouses, better parents, and lead more meaningful and impactful lives. This painting is called Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog. It was painted by Caspar Friedrich in 1818. And in it, Friedrich uses a technique that he used in many of his paintings called the Rucken figure, or the figure from the back. Usually when an artist places a human figure in their, in their work, uh, their face is usually visible, and almost always the person depicted is the reason for the image to exist. They're uh, they become the focus of our attention, their identity, and their facial expressions become keys to us understanding what the image is all about. But when you turn the figure around and we don't see their face, our brains become less interested in the figure and much more interested in whatever it is they're looking at. This happens naturally. So the Ruckin figure sort of functions as an invitation for our imagination to occupy, in some sense, occupy their space. It's a lean forward activity for the viewer to go on a, on a journey of their own, to, to enter into their space or deeper into the mystery or the adventure of their landscape. Art historians have talked about how the, how the Ruckin figure is sort of a placeholder that you and I can virtually occupy, taking up sort of virtual existence in their world. And this is this is powerful insight, but it's also not new information. For creatives in a lot of different fields have been utilizing this visual tool for a long, long time. In fact, scrolling through Instagram reveals that a lot of uh, travel bloggers and even uh, influencers are oftentimes realize that turning away from the camera creates a much more compelling experience for the viewer. For example, this image seems to communicate hey, get out there and see the world. But if you turn her around, it communicates, hey, look at me. My vacation was better than yours. <laughs> and another great example of the Ruck and Figure is in the world of movie posters. Friedrich's Wanderer Above a Sea of Fog has no doubt uh, inspired countless movie poster designers who, who seemed intent to recreate his image again and again and again. Now, I actually don't have the copyright permission for the movies that you and I um, all love, and so these are all just made up, but they, they probably look somewhat familiar because the Ruckin figure is one of the most often repeated <laughs> one. Of the, yeah, this has nothing to do with uh, you know, Christopher Nolan's Inception. It's completely, yeah, it, it's, everything's fine. Um, it is one of the most often repeated motifs in movie poster designs, and the reason is because it works. And the reason it works in movie posters or in uh, travel blogging or in Friedrich's uh, paintings is because of what it communicates about all of us, and it's this. None of us, no one, deep down, is really looking for a hero. Instead, we're looking for inspiration, and encouragement and help to lead our own hero's journey. Everyone here and everyone we know is the hero of their own story. We all have our own goals and, um, and, uh, and dreams and obstacles that we have to face and everyone feels like they're the leading role in a movie that's all about them. Which is why marketers and savvy companies and political campaigns have long known that one of the best ways to engage an audience is to remember that the audience is always the hero. Because if our audience or our customers don't see our product or our service or our campaign as a way to help them win the day, then they're just not going to be interested. Again, not new information. But what I'm wrestling with today is not how to sell a product or how to get someone to vote for me. Instead, I'm wrestling with how can we all develop very deep connection with the people around us and deep, fulfilling lives coming out of a pandemic. And I think the Ruck and Figure helps. I just turned 50 years old. Uh, for the last few years, I have been wrestling with questions of second half of life, second half of career. Uh, and like many of us coming out of the last two years, I find myself feeling exhausted and impatient and confused. I am weary of cultural infighting and tribalism, so much so that sometimes I just want to go hide. 
as a minister, um, years of being shot at from both sides have definitely taken their toll. There are multiple times I've wondered if I just want to throw in the towel. As an artist, I go through long periods of time where I just feel like my art is going nowhere or going in the wrong direction. And if I think about any of those things too long or how, about how my own journey seems to be at a standstill or just rudderless, I can get really discouraged. But the Ruck and Figur reminds me that my own journey is not the only journey that matters. For every one of us, whatever context we are in, we have each been given the opportunity, the incredible opportunity to have, the, have a part to play in the lives of other people, whether at work or at home or in the organizations that we are a part of. We each have a choice to make, and it, and it revolves around how we answer this question. Is it going to be about me, or is it going to be about them? Does it always have to be me winning the day, or can it be about them winning the day? You see, I'm learning what it means to still strive for excellence in my work while at the same time hold on to a different type of scorecard, a scorecard that looks less at the, at the numbers of my own accomplishments and more at the numbers of people I've been able to help and encourage. And I've got to tell you, it is a, it is a scorecard that I found to be much more fulfilling. In fact, I think it's a noble calling to turn around to call less attention to ourselves and more greatness out of others. When we make the decision to turn away from our own image management and instead embrace vulnerability and be open to our own questions and struggles, we help others who are struggling also. When we make the decision to be open-handed with our, with our tips or with our lessons learned, we can help others win the day. We can choose to be generous with our encouragement or with the opportunities that we give to other people. We can choose to share the credit. But none of this feels natural. In fact, it requires a, a, a deep sense of security in our own selves and who we are and what we have to offer to the world. It requires an uncomfortable level of selflessness if we're going to help other people succeed. And if we're going to help other people succeed, it requires that we have a genuine understanding of them and compassion and maybe even love for them. And as great as that sounds, in the moment, it doesn't feel intuitive. In, in fact, it feels threatening. But that choice is a choice worth making because it is a path of greater meaning and a larger life impact. Whatever our life stage, whatever our vocation, I believe that our lives and our work in this world find their greatest purpose when they flower and bear fruit in the lives of other people. Our path of greatest influence is the path of helping others succeed. The reason everyone resonates with the Ruck and Figure image is not because everyone is looking for someone to be impressed by. Rather, everyone is looking for someone to be inspired someone who calls out greatness from other people and helps other people succeed. Be that type of person for someone else.